YouTube. Welcome back. This is Tiffany Martin with Martin's Morphs and I hope you enjoy this week's video. We're going to talk a little bit about genetics. It, we're going to talk a little bit about ball python genetics. Now, practical math is involved in figuring out to breeding ball pythons. This is an essential thing to know if you want to get into this um, hobby. We learned this from Justin Gabilka, and he's very knowledgeable in um, genetics. And I'm just going to show you what I learned and how I learned it. The difference between codominant and recessive genes. People think that these work differently, but in, um, in mathematics, they actually work exactly the same. Let's start with a simple pairing. Um, in ball pythons, there are two chromosomes to every allele. There are two chromosomes for the, the gene of that ball python. So let's do an incomplete dominant pairing. Um, about a fire and a normal. Now, because there are two copies of the gene, we're going to do a Punnett square. And let's make this our male and this our female. Now, here's the Punnett square. We're going to do four. They can get more difficult than this. But um, let's do, and then we're going to have the female up top. So how you calculate this is you go so it carries the, the gene from the father and the mother. You get one copy of the gene from the father and one copy of gene from the mother, and so on and so forth. So, um, immediately you're going to get a fire and a fire and two normals. I'm going to show you how we would get a uh, multiple codominant genes. Um, let's do a firefly. So, the male is going to be a fire, and the female is going to be a pastel. Okay, so as I said before, they carry two copies. So the pastel is going to carry a copy of the pastel and a copy of the normal gene. So will the fire. So let's run the Punnett square again and we'll do the male and then the female. So, right off the bat, you get a firefly. And then there's going to be a fire and a pastel and then a normal. So one out of four is going to be a normal and the same goes for the ultimate one that you are trying to produce from this pairing. Getting the basic uh, recessives, head to head. Um, het means heterozygous. Um, when breeding a het to het, your odds are one in four, and this is why. Let's go with a albino. It's a basic recessive gene. Um, they're both albino. Okay, so male would be, it would only carry one copy of the gene. So with the female because they're both pet. So if you run the Punnett square, you're going to get this. You will get one visual, one het, one het, and one normal. But there is no way to know which one of these carried the gene for the albino. So that is why we say that they are 60% het. 
exactly, but we do know mathematically that two out of three of these will be het for albino. We know 66%. Now the question is, how do we get 50%? Where does that terminology come so from? So we're going to do a het versus non-het now. Using albino again, this is the het, and this is the non-het. Running the Punnett square, we're going to do and that is the het. This is albino, this is normal, this is normal, and this is normal. This is the non-het. So there is going to be two out of four that are have the gene. Then the other two out of the four do not have the gene. So that is where it comes in to play the 50% het. It is very hard to know whether this one this one has the gene or this one has the gene. So we say 50% until proven 100 by breeding. Gone over 66% het, 50% het. And we have gone over uh, co-dominant genes as well. Um, now I want to show you how we get 100% het. So you can breed a visual to a het. So the visual is going to carry two copies of the albino gene. The het is going to carry only one copy of the albino gene. I'm running the Punnett square. You're going to have a visual out the gate. Then you're going to have a head, visual, and a head. So because this parent carries the al two copies of the albino gene, all of the babies are 100% albino or head. For albino. I hope I made that easy for you guys to understand and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Um, I just wanted to break it down just a little bit for you guys to understand the genetics of ball pythons because I know I struggled with it a little bit when I first started um, trying to gain knowledge on ball pythons. Um, you guys have a great week. Thanks for stopping by. Hit that like button folks and don't forget to subscribe.